or uh, 320 video, sorry. Um, what you see in front of you is where we're aiming. Uh, we're going to be using this as a guide uh, just to figure out what the basics are of measurements, for example. So uh, how do we measure a step? This is a from step. Uh, you can see there's no history here. It's fairly rudimentary. And uh, you can see right down here on the right, kind of a kind of auto measuring thing. If we want to be more involved here, we can use the measuring tool itself. Uh, if we, we have things here pre-selected and we can start that for a couple of secondary units and all the rest. However, this looks like it might not be a uh, millimeter part, it might be an imperial part. Change our unit type to inch. Try again. Ah, an eighth. This is clearly an imperial part. Let's try this size. Half an inch. So I'm just shift selecting these. Gives me a radius. So let's try uploading our supplied uh, file. And given that, let's keep an eye on this in the background. So navigate to the way where you want your file to be. Uh, just to reiterate here, you don't need this file. Uh, we're just going to use this for the purposes of the video to figure out what we're doing. You can just follow along uh, putting in the values uh, happily. So upload, navigate and find your file. Uh, for me in the Mac, just drag drop, but I'm looking for this F3D file. The type is uh, Fusion 360 archiving file. And it's the only way we can put sketches into a, a file without any bodies. Upload. It's quite a small file. Should be easy. You can close that while it's running if you want it back again. There's a little toggle down there. It'll give you a warning. And you can open it from there or just double click. And we see a sketch and we think, aha, that is probably a sketch that might have generated this. So let's just close our data panel and off we go. Now, first, I always like to look and see what's going on. Turn on the sketch dimensions. We can have a look. Definitely an inch part. Let's make sure we are an inch. Correct. Everything looks good. Except for sketch two, it's not fully defined. There's only one dimension on it. It's probably controlled by that first sketch. Let's call this something. And we can see the side profile. Maybe call it sketch two. Uh, looks like we're going to be making shapes at the bottom of that clamp. So we'll call it uh, shaping profile. If we can get in there. Slow it up quick. Nice. Why is it not fully defined? Double click the icon to edit. Let's go down here and have a look. Now I've got a blue line here. Oh, so just try and drag it in. It looks like it needs to be horizontal. Have it highlighted. Horizontal vertical. Nice. We're all set to go. So somebody has went through, I think, Colin, and done a lot of sketching here. It's a bit janky. It's fairly rudimentary type sketch, but it is what it is. We have an origin centered on the hole. The same as the step file. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, it's up to us the order we want to do things in here. It looks like there's two extru main extrusions. Three maybe. And some revolves. Let's do the extrusions first. Um, doesn't really matter, but let's go ahead and do one, two, three, and then the revolves on top of that. Make sure it comes out looking right. So keep in mind we want to do primary, secondary, tertiaries. The primary, the biggest thing first. Uh, it's arguable that it's maybe this one. So let's do an extrude. Now, what we've got to selected, we 
want to make sure that there's no gaps or anything uh, in um, like extrudes and all the rest. So I am actually going to not do this. Actually, I'm going to do the full width extrude first. If I just keep clicking, it will just remove selections and remove. I'm not pressing shift or anything here. But I am going to keep going ahead here and just do this whole. Oh. Uh, you can see my select. I want a window. I uh, just press it on the keyboard. In this case, one. Preview starts gone. We can start again if we wish. So let's do the full. If I hold Command or Control, <laughs> it just keeps going. Uh, just adding. Now, this is not the right size, so we need not a one side, but a symmetrical. Let's go for the full width. And what was it? Can we switch? No, uh, we might have done something there. Half an inch. Let's go back here. Ah, it just finished the command. Let's go ahead and do that and edit that guy. Full width is 0.5. Okay, this is going to be revolved in here. Let's get rid of that origin. It's looking fine. Let's go with that. New body. Only option. No tape or anything like that. Uh, when you use a sketch, it usually hides it. Turn it back on. Do another extrude. It's just this guy here. I think it was an eighth. Check it in a minute here. So an eighth of an inch. Symmetrical over the full measurement. Symmetrical as well. And we want here join, which it should be defaulting to. It's all looking good. Now, one thing we can do is have a look at what's going on here. One thing we're going to be going on about a lot this year is going back to redo and fix up and you know kind of uh, sort things out uh, correctly. Now, see here that in the original, there's a smooth transition here. This shape is probably controlled by that sketch that we've been looking at, this guy. So this time, let's fix this first extrusion. Instead of just saying, typing in a value, let's go for a different thing. Two sides. Distance, instead of saying that, let's go to object. You can actually pick these two corner points next one is to object. Select it. It's the one I want right there. Now this is kind of great. No, it doesn't change anything but what it does hides the sketch. What it does is controls everything so that when we eventually come here probably going to be doing cuts here it's automatically aligned correctly because we're using the sketch to control the width. Nice. Uh, why am I doing it like this in this video? I'm trying to make a point of we have realizations as we model and it shouldn't stop us from going back to fix things up as we go. And so as we see problems heaving into sight on the horizon, we try and fix it as we get there. Okay, so we've got our masses working fairly well so far. So what's next? Probably the revolves, so let's go and do the revolves. Uh, because this is the primary shape, this is going to eventually be a different body, so I'm going to do this revolve first at the top here, pick an axis. Doesn't matter what you pick, you can pick in the sketch. It's not a cut, but a join. Now, 
Now, because of the logic in the sketch, it also is nicely merging with the body. Let's think for a second. Looks good. So we've joined that on, checking that we've only got one body so far. Looks good. Next is another revolve. So let's go for revolve. You can also just press S, revolve. Solid surface, solid as blue. Now, there's tons of sketching going on here. What you can do is just add, take away. So lots of profiles. Don't want that, don't want that. Nice axis. Let's pick that top edge. It's not a cut. It's not a join either. It just sticks it in and wastes all that energy in there. We want a new body. Two bodies arrive. There's no hole yet, and so we'll have to worry about that later. So it's just firmly overlapping right now. Notice there's no edge right there. It's fine. Nice. Next, I'm going to start trying to shape this bottom edge here. Let's have a look at the original. Some fillets going on, but this is the surface we're interested in. Notice this web sticks out at the point here until it comes down to this touch. Okay, so we can do that. Uh, there's options here. Uh, previously, uh, we've used this part before. We kind of, or at least I cut out a piece of it and then deleted a face. It's not the most obvious way to do it. So what we're going to do is a more complicated uh, pair of cuts. Now that we're getting into secondary territory here. We've got some primaries. Now we're going to start doing some secondaries. Extrude. Now I find it easy to, if I want just the edges and not the main, get everything first and remove the middle. Nice. I'm going to start from an object, which is the back of this guy. Start dragging to make sure I get the right stuff. Oh, nice. So I'm going to start from the back and go to an object. And it's a cut. Uh, you can try this. Well, it'll just give you an error. There's no profile to change to. We want it to go up to shape. It's fine. Say OK. Redo. Now, right click, you always get the same thing you did before. If you want to be very fancy, right click and drag up to noon. This time we're going to do a cut. We can go all the way. So you want to select profiles again. This time, get rid of those two guys as well. So now we got these lower corners. Go until you hit that face. And because you're reusing the sketch, just go far distance all. It's avoiding the pin. So we are safe here. If you want, you can check objects to cut only body three. Body three, the main body. Say so okay. Nice work. And because we use this sketch to derive the width, get the perfectly aligned, correctly sorted out face uh, orientation or conglomeration down in here. So this should be on the edge of the part, which it is. Perfect. What's next? Uh, we do have one more secondary event, which is the fact that uh, our bodies are overlapping. If we have a look at analysis, it's a section analysis. If it's not showing up, add a section analysis on the said X plane. I don't like the directions that it's in, so we can add it and switch. Sketches might be getting in the way. Ah, that's what's going on. It's clearly overlapped. Combine. Target body is what we want to cut. Tool body is the cutter. And that defaults probably to join, switch to cut. You'll notice the preview is showing this is disappearing. Keep the tool. So the tool is 
the little post body. So if we keep the tool, nothing will change except for that we now have a nice cut out hole. Now, this is a casting. It's tempting to go ahead here and delete these faces. No, oh, let's do that. There we go. So it's tempting to do that. But that's not how this thing's made. It's actually cast, just undoing, cast around the pin. The pin is cast into the clamp. Uh, this is aluminum and a steel pin. So it's actually like so. Let's have a look in here. Can we do an analysis in here? Let's make sure we get the right thing. Uh, section analysis. Looking for a plane. That'll do. Uh, yeah, same. So cast around. While we're here, let's measure some edges here. This one is it parallel to the face. This looks like a sixty. Looks like thirty second. Some bigger ones, I think, up here. Sixteenth. That's an eighth on the diameter, so the sixteenth and a thirty-second. That uh, this is also strange. Uh, that number gives it away. It's a threaded hole, probably quarter. Okay, so there we go. There's where we are so far. Now, for me, I tend to leave fillets to the end, so my next feature is going to be the hole. So up here, if you hover, it'll give you a little blurb. I'm going to turn off the analysis. Uh, the shortcut is H, or you can do a search for the shortcut. Hell, hole. Hole. Uh, go for uh, add a point because we're just doing one. We don't have a sketch for this. And pick the surface maybe first. Drag it, drag it around. And see if it's a circular surface, it'll show you the center point. Uh, anything regular, like a polygon or anything, will show you the middle. Uh, you can pull it around, get a feel for how it's working. Uh, this is Fusion, not SolidWorks, so this won't crash it, but it's probably not what we're after. It's a quarter inch. Wall. and we're gonna just I don't want to go all of course because if I say distance all can go right through this piece too which I don't want up to there we go it's actually in the other model it doesn't show very well but it's a countersunk that's oh, sorry tap hole uh, so we've got a simple tap hole full thread with an angled bottom. It doesn't matter because we're just stopping on that surface. Let's pull this up so we can see more stuff. Uh, strangely, the grab is down the lower right. Objects to cut. Should be body three again. And we're after a quarter inch. Let's try, make sure that it shows, or make sure we have a look here at, it's grayed out because we can't adjust this, but it shows us the minimum a pre-threaded state of the material to make this thread. It's point 0.2. We were slightly bigger than that because we're after, I believe, a 24. Uh, I'm actually going to have a look here. 24, I believe. I'm going to model it. For those who are wondering what I'm going on about here, as we change the designation, Say so yeah, I'm more fine. Notice the diameter shifting. I believe we are 24. So what I'm going to do is not model it first, so I can check once I get everything looking all right that it's the same size. So what's our diameter here? No. Radius. Let's do this uh, measuring tool. Diameter 0.21. Uh, it's 0.21 exactly, it looks like. Yep. 
Let's check the other guy. Oh, 0.205. So that's not right. So let's go back and adjust this guy. looks like this is about right. Let's go with that. Quarter inch, 24. It's not exactly correct. That would be a thing to check with the supplier later. It's probably fairly safe though, quarter inch, 24. Common screw. Say okay. Let's go with that. Okay. Sorry about that. Not exactly perfect. Thank you, step. What else is going on here? Let's have a look. Get rid of our analysis. There's a hole here. That's probably what that sketch is for. How to fill it. It's all good. Let's go ahead and do the hole first. Turn on the sketches. Yeah, this guy's the hole. Okay, so now remove. Sorry, remove. Pull up. Now I'm missing someone on purpose here. I'm going to pick this edge as a revolve. Uh, notice there's these two little tiny bits. And we've got this going already. We need to turn off the preview. For me, it's command in the Mac, in the PC sorry, it's uh, control. So for me, it's not what I want. so sometimes it's hard to get that. So let's get <laughs> let's highlight the right thing first. See here, I've lost my axis, which kind of helps in a way. Reselect the axis. Sorry, it's doing that all wrong. But we're essentially trying to get all of these areas, these profiles, objects to cut. It should be body four. Cut. It's not a new body, that's for sure. It's it's a cut. Okay. See this sort of partial chamfer going on we're gonna look that's what we're after hide the sketches fillets our fun step fillets shortcut f there you go look for the search strange interface at first um, basically you can add selection sets with each uh, one with its own radius and what type it is and all that sort of stuff I'm gonna go for the basics here Add a selection set if you wish. Start picking something, excuse me. Now until you ask for a preview, or a value, it won't show you the preview, but as soon as you start pulling or typing in, I believe this is our 16th, so it's an inch, so we can just say one divided by 16. There we go. So it looks in the other part, let's say okay to that. Let's have a look at the other one. The big values, big, they're quite close, but these are clearly larger than this. So there's a few sixteens and a lot of thirty seconds. So it looks like anywhere no, here's a large one. So That small one is also, well, it's a small change, so it's quite a small value. That's the bigger value. So, 16th. Don't know why I'm so picky about this. 16th. Yeah, and these ones as well. So the rest are 30 seconds. Let's go ahead and edit our field, our fillet. So we've still got the selection set. If you press your toggle preview, for me command, for you control, perhaps if you're on P PC, 
to start selecting these new guys. Um, you sh I probably you probably by default have select through turned on. So if you know where they are, you can select right through. Look for those edges. Ten edges in the end. Now you can say okay here, uh, cement it and if it crashes you don't have to save, but realistically fusion doesn't crash very much. Just go on with plus. Nothing happens until you pick the first new thing. Type in what you want. You'll start to get previews running. Again, toggling on and off the preview allows you to pick more easily. So I'm just going to go ahead here and go around, making sure that everything is kosher. Trying to keep, also trying to keep symmetrical. Straight at the top here, we definitely need these top pieces done. Looks good. So methodically going down here. Kind of working my way down the part. Uh, it is easy to get confused and lost doing filleting. Uh, for some of you, you might be watching this going, is it possible to pick surfaces? Yes, but for me, uh, just going to go ahead here. And for this time, it's clearly like picking this would be a good idea because they're all the same, but okay, methodically going through just to make sure we get everything we want. Do not pick this corner here. Make a big deal about it later. So far, looking good. Just looking for someone that's missing. Continuing on. And one side. as well though you're looking for changes between the thing and last but not least hopefully these two guys something not right here notice we've got a kind of a ball end here corner ah there we go so this is, these corner pieces are actually the easiest thing to check for consistency and filleting. And so if you're missing a corner, it's easier to see than sometimes a missing fillet on an edge. So what you should have, in summary, is a 16th, 10 edges, 32nd, 33 edges. Say OK. And that's about it. Um, they are different materials, uh, aluminum and steel. Uh, right now we can't do anything about that. If I press shift in, it'll go back to just as it is. You can see it's probably stainless. To be able to, uh, uh, to be able to assign materials to each of these guys, we need to make components first. Highlight the bodies, right click, create, create. <laughs> Create components from bodies. Ugh. All of a sudden you get this new history type stuff. One of the big advantages of this is we can call things, for example, frame. Uh, and we can also call it uh, pin. Uh, it means that we can also work our way in. We can go and do work within just the component. So hit the radio button. You notice it goes everything out and the history changes. So any history from now on would be just within this component. Same for the pin. Big advantage of this, to go back to the top level, radio right button at the end. We can now choose materials for the frame. So for example, we can say physical material. 
a list of physical materials will show up. Pull it off. Uh, we're under metal. Right now it looks a little bit strange. There's a lot of stuff, but uh, it's quite serious. I'm going to go for aluminum. Hmm. I don't know, 60, 61. Grab it, drag it on. Sometimes it doesn't stick, just give it another go. The other one is steel, I hope, still stainless. It's probably okay. 317, fine. Uh, to check, that's for properties. It'll show you as you reselect and select what's going on. You can also select the entire assembly, various materials. And in here, we can find our volume, for example. Now this is 661 cubic inch right now. What we have right now at this end here is this thread apart is modeled. That's just a simple hole, the sort of minor diameter of the hole. Pre, in a way, pre-threaded. Uh, you can change this. Up in document settings, once you have threads, you can change it over to modeled. Let's have a look at the analysis. Yeah, it's modeled the threads. That'll change the volume. So the kind of a end of end state. So let's look again. Properties. Again, if you unselect nothing, you can pick the bits. Let's look at the whole thing. Our new volume, six, five, nine. That's the number I would like to see. So we'll make sure you're showing six, five, nine. I'm just gonna take a screenshot of this here. And that's the mass volume and density. Well, the density means nothing because uh, it's a combo of parts. But the key thing for us is this volume for uh, this. Uh, project or for this uh, day I'm just screenshot so I know what it is and there we go thanks for watching that's how to model a Bessie clamp up from a supplied set of sketches uh, over to you uh, you'll be making PDFs out of this and all the rest and uh, again thanks for watching